what do you use the most interesting, beautiful moments in the history of science? What stands out? If, uh, and then we can pull at that thread. <laughs> right. Well, I like to think of events that have a major impact and involve both beautiful uh, conceptual, mathematical, if we're talking physical structures work, and are associated as well with probing experimental situations. So um, among my favorites is one of the most famous, which was uh, the young Isaac Newton's work with the colors produced when you pass sunlight through a prism. And why do I like that? Um, it's not profoundly mathematical in one sense. It doesn't need it initially. It needs the following, though, which begins to show you, I think, a little bit about what gets involved when you've got a smart individual who's trying to monkey around with stuff and finds new things about it. Um, first, let me say that the, the notion, the prevailing notion going back to antiquity was that um, colors are produced in a sense by modifying or tinting white light, mm -hmm. that they're modifications of white light. In other words, the colors are not in the sunlight in any way, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> now, what Newton did following experiments done by Descartes before him, who came to very different conclusions, he took a prism. You might ask, where do you get prisms in the you know, 1660s? Questions. <laughs> County fairs. They were very popular. They were pretty crude with bubbles in them and everything, but they produced colors. So you could buy them at county fairs and things, very popular. Oh, so they were modifying the white light well, to, to create colors. They were creating colors from it, well known. Um, and what he did was the following. He was by this time, even though he's very young, a very good mathematician. And he could use the then known laws for how light behaves when it goes through glass to calculate what should happen if you took light from the sun, passed it from a hole through a little hole, then hit the prism, goes out of the prism, goes strikes a wall a long distance away and makes a splash of light. Never mind the colors for a moment. Makes a splash of light there. He was very smart. First of all, he abstracts from the colors themselves, even though that's what everybody's paying attention to initially. and Because what he knows is this. He knows that if you take this prism and you turn it to a certain particular angle that he knew what it should be because he could calculate things. Very few other people in Europe at the time could calculate things like he could that if you turn the prism to that particular angle, then the sun, which is, of course, a circle, when its light passes through this little hole and then into the prism, on the far distant wall, should still make a circle. Mm. But it doesn't. It makes a very long image, okay? And uh, this uh, led him to a very different conception of light, indicating that there are different types of light in the sunlight. Now, to go beyond that, what's particularly interesting, I think, is the following. When he published uh, this paper, which got him into a controversy, uh, he really didn't describe at all what he did. He just gave you some numbers. Now, I just told you that you had to set this prism at a certain angle, right? You would think because we do have his notes and so on, um, you would think that he took some kind of complicated measuring device to set the prism. He didn't. He held it in his hand. That's all. And he twiddled it around. And what was he doing? It turns out that when you twiddle the prism around at the point where you should get a circle from a circle, it also is the place where the image does not move very fast. Mm. So if you want to get close to there, you just twiddle it. This is manipulative experimentation taking advantage through his mathematical knowledge of the inherent inaccuracies that label, let you come to exact conclusions regardless of the built-in problematics of measurement. He's the only one I know of 
doing anything like that at by the this time. time. Yeah. Well, even still, there's very few people that are able to have to calculate as well as he did to be a theoretician and an experimentalist, like in the same moment. <laughs> right. Um, it, it it's true, although until uh, the um, really the well into the 20th century, maybe the beginning of the 20th century, really. Um, most of the most uh, significant experimental results produced in the 1800s, which laid the foundations for light, electricity, electrodynamics, and so on, um, even an, uh, hydrodynamics and whatnot, were also produced by people who were both excellent calculators, uh, uh, very talented mathematicians, and good with their hands experimentally. 